Hi, my name is Bob and I'm renovating this 1973 Egg Harbor Sportfish boat. Well, hello everyone. Welcome to Renovation Sportfish. Now, in this episode, we kick off all the work that's going on here in the cockpit. Now, it's a ton of work. Um, a previous episode, I can't remember what the number is, I'll put it up here on the screen for you here. But uh, we tore everything out. And uh, all the framing, everything, I had to cut it all out. And I spent the majority of the year 2019, and up till right now, trying to put this thing back together. Now, I'm far from done. Uh, this is, uh, this video is probably going to come out in April sometime. Uh, and I still have a ton of work to do. Uh, it's going to take me probably the whole summer of 2020 to get this thing done. So uh, hopefully you don't get too bored with it because uh, it's going to be a long haul for us. Uh, for me in particular because I'm doing the work. But even for you following along. So I understand if uh, I'll try to do maybe some videos in between here to um, do some other things just to break it up. I have a, lot of, a couple little projects I can work on and um, do that. But we'll see if that happens or not. I mean, I just wing this whole thing. So anyways, I am standing on something, so there is something as for a deck uh, finished at this point. But um, we're starting this one off with just the beginning where I started um, some of the framing. So um, let's kick it off and um, do some boat building. So in the early stages of this part of the project, um, it was in the beginning of the year, so it was... Uh, January, February of 2019. And of course it's winter here in Connecticut and um, it's kind of cold. But I did manage to get some of the framing done. Now this was before YouTube and thinking of YouTube. So it's basically uh, some pictures. But basically I'm using uh, mahogany for all the framing. The original framing was uh, part mahogany, part dug fur. And it was really good dug fur actually. Very tight grain dug fur. Two by threes, like a typical two by three you would buy anywhere. Um, and that's what they use. But I'm going to use all mahogany for everything. Uh, I like the way it works. It's a little bit lighter. You can't get that quality dug fur tight grain that they got nowadays. It's just not around. So I'm just, just going to stick with mahogany for, for all the framing. So everything you see is mahogany. And um, yeah. And so I got the um, some framing done in the aft area here. Kind of where the camera is right now. And the sides of both pieces of um, decking are done. Now I changed the design here from the original because the original um, I had to cut it out to get it out get get the pieces out of here and had to remove tanks and all kinds of things and there wasn't a lot of room so I'm changing the layout of it changing how the hatches go I had a bunch of different ideas I finally settled on it obviously because I'm a little further along here uh, and I'm gonna make it modular so the, the aft area is going to be permanently installed, probably about, I'd say about two feet. And then, of course, up by the main bulkhead, which I did a long time ago, which is only about six inches or so, that's permanently attached. But everything else is going to be able to be removed if it has to be. Um, there's two side pieces that you're going to see framed up. And then there's a center frame piece that's about two feet wide that I'm kind of actually standing on right now. Um, and that's all going to be bolted together. Um, really shouldn't have to take anything out once I get the fuel tanks in and I get the engines back in. All this stuff is going to be uh, permanently, or semi-permanently installed with caulking and everything else. So I really shouldn't have to. But if I ever have to, I can do it. And take, just taking this center section out to remove engines or to have a lot of room to work would be great if I had a major project to do. Um, hoping I never have to, but it's going to be uh, designed that way. And so that's my improvement for the whole thing. So that's what you're going to see at the beginning of this video is um, the aft framing being uh, built and the side frames along the side here. Um, and then we jump from March through April, which is the videos I just did of the interior because I jumped back on that. And then we get back into this project uh, late April, and um, that's when I started taking some videos, and so we'll get into that. So, let's start this project off.
Well, I'm going to start on a new project here with the boat. Uh, so I think I just do a little inter uh, introduction to it. This is probably the main project for this year, 2019. Um, and it all comes down into this cockpit here. I'll be doing other things, but this is probably the main one I'll be working on and it probably has the most work. It's the last big area that I haven't really touched too much. Uh, I have taken out some of the um, framing. I actually took all of the framing and all the decking out and I re started replacing framing is what I meant to say. And so I'll just pan you around so you can see what I've done so far. I started this kind of last year at the end of the year and uh, but you know now I'm just continuing on with it so I'll pan you around you can see what's going on with it. So we've got this framing on the side that I already redid. I started doing some of the main frame beams at the transom area and then of course on this side I got this side framing done as well. I already had the main beam finished here along the main bulkhead that I did when I did the bulkhead. So as part of this project and the reason I'm saving this for now and doing this now is I want to remove the two engines you see there and the fuel tanks. Uh, I'm also going to take these mufflers out because I got to do some work on the transom, but that's a part of this project as well. You know, some delaminated plywood back there that I'll get into on another uh, another time. But yeah, so all this has got to come out this year, and I got to do some work on those uh, the bed, the engine beds there. They, they look like they might have been replaced at one time. Um, so, but they are rotting. I think they just made them out of uh, pressure treated wood or something. But anyways, I gotta, gotta deal with those. So once I get the engines out, I can do that. But in the meantime, I can't really get these engines out right now. I'm all kind of blocked in with other boats and they're never gonna be able to help me get, this, get these things out of here with their lift and tractors and stuff. So, and I'm, the tanks still have fuel in them, old fuel, so I have to have those emptied out at some time and they're not going to be able to get a truck in here or anything to do that right now until some of these boats around me go back into the water for the year. So in the meantime I'm going to um, work on this framing and now that I got the two side pieces done I'm going to work on a piece that's going to be right in the center. So today I'm going to um, start laying in. You see the pieces laying on the side piece there. Those are going to be the main cross pieces uh, that they're already cut with a camber on them on the top and so I'm just going to have to figure out where I want to put these two pieces in this area. I do have a sketch of it, drawing of it that I did. I probably will, probably will be following the dimensions on that drawing but I may not. It all depends on where things lie and, and line up. So let's get started with it. So the first thing I have to do here, and I apologize that the audio might not be too great. I'm going to try to speak up because it's raining and it's, it's all I can hear on the uh, shrink wrap here. But I'm working by myself like I always do. And, um, you know, to put these, set these beams in and hold them up here while I'm trying to fidget them around and get them in the right place. I have to make some sort of uh, temporary bracket. So I'm going to take these pieces of wood, which I've used before uh, to do the side frames. Um, I put a couple screws in here, but for today I'm probably just going to clamp it on. And I'll clamp it on this way. And then I need another piece to be like a 90 degree piece. That'll be that way. And then, you know, the beam will just sit right on there. Uh, and I could slide this around and turn the angle to get it right. So the first thing I'm going to do, since I've already got four of these made from the from putting in the side pieces, I'll cut cut a couple lengths off this scrap wood I have here, and these will be the um, horizontal pieces that the beams will sit on. So let's go do that. So I had one of these already cut from a previous clamp I made, so I'm just going to. Uh, 
copy. Copy again. So now I'll just put this together. I'll use the one that already had screws in it, so I'll have to mess with it. But I'll just put like a 90 on here so I make sure they're at the right angle, which is good right there. And I'll just take a couple of these are just little, I use these all the time. Here's just little sheetrock screws. Always twist when you do that. Let me straighten it out. And this is like some really soft kind of one by pine that I like to use because it, it's just easy to screw into without pre drilling. So there you go. So now we got uh, now we got our pieces here. I brought my little uh, 90 with me, and uh, yeah. So now I'll put two on this side and put two over there. Uh, yeah. And so I just have to measure back how far I want these things. And I'll, I'll just clamp them on for now, uh, and then I'll put another one back here uh, for this side. So now I'm going to. Uh, just measure back to where I want to install these, the front face of the beam. Uh, I think my drawing's at 43 inches. Unfortunately, I didn't bring my drawing today, so I'm just working from memory. But I'm not putting anything in permanent anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'll change it if I have to. So, I just, I could use a tape measure, but I had this long steel rule, so I just clamped it on that end so it doesn't move around. Uh, and I just mark it here at 43. Once I've marked it at 43 inches, then I'm just going to make a perpendicular line down on this this piece here. So I know my I want my face of my beam to line up with that. So I'll do it on the other side, and I'll do another line back behind me here to represent the uh, the, back, the the aft beam that I'm going to be putting in. So I have all my marks and then I can uh, start putting in my clamps. So the other nice thing about using this um, steel rule here is I don't have to fumble around with a tape measure I'm by myself. In this case it works nice because it's just laying flat on here. So I think the, the distance between the two faces is going to be um, two feet. And so that's what I'm going to measure out to. But I'm going to have to double check that before I worry about that. So, um, yeah. So they actually ended up going home on my lunch break and getting my plan because I didn't want to guess about this thing. So anyways, here's my plan. And I'm really looking at this center section right here. Uh, here's the transom on this side. And that's the main bulkhead, so this is the area we, we were trying to build. So I was right with the 43 inches from the main bulkhead beam there down to where I want to be. So kind of clamp this one in position here and then I just take my square. I'm using this square because it's a little thicker. And here we go. We're right on 43 and we're you know perpendicular to the top there perfectly 90 so that's where the face of the beam needs to be not too worried about the height of this right now because I can raise that or lower that once I cut the beam get it in there then I'll I'll mess it around then 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 I can screw in this piece right to the right to there and I know it's going to be in the right spot every time I move it and put it in and out I won't be moving. I can remove this clamp here. Okay, so I've made my mark here at one foot eight and a half, and I drew my line already, like I did on the other on the other bracket. And this bracket, I had to go.
to cut the bottom off a little because I was hitting this uh, piece that holds the fuel tank in. I couldn't put it down far enough. So now I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. So now I have to cut this end of this beam here and it's three foot six um, to the end from the center. So I had this set up. That's three foot six, but I want a space on the edge and these are some spacers that I made that I've been using um, to give it a little room to move, you know, to, to get it in and out. Uh, it'll be, it looks a little wide, but um, there'll be some fiberglass on the edge of this, so that's going to make up some of that distance. It's not going to be as wide as that. But even if it was that wide, it's going to be a cock joint anyway, so. Uh, but this is what I've been using, and I'm going to keep using it. So, uh, that's... So that's the three and a half. And then we have to subtract the spacer, which I'm just going to make a, a mark here, and then use this to mark it further. And I could also check it by putting this here and getting it right on the line. it there I should have this much space on each end do that same measurement on both sides and I'll cut these and um, uh, we'll try to fit it and see how it goes so I've got the piece cut to length and uh, I'm trying to fit it in and when I was cutting it I noticed that the board does have a twist in it this one the other one doesn't but this one does um, so I'll take this spacer out here for a second. Um, so on this side, the top is, that bracket is right on as far as the height goes. It's, uh, it's right on it. So I don't have to lower that or raise it or anything. Um, so I can put the spacer in. So you can see how this board wants to fall back. That's because it's got that twist in it. So... To get this twist out, I think what I'm going to have to do is just screw that bracket to the side piece over here. Screw that bracket to this. And then clamp this right to that. And then do the same thing on the other side. And that should get the twist out. And then when I put the interconnecting pieces of board in from the front, from the front piece to the back piece over here, it should uh, straighten it out. One would hope. Uh, and it, you know, I, I think it'll work. So, anyways, I'm going to clamp this thing up and then I'll uh, go back to doing some video. Alright, I got these in. I have to talk as loud as I can because it's raining again and I can't hear anything. But, um, yeah, so I got this side. This is the starboard side. You can see the spacer is in there. And the clamp is up pretty high because the twist is on the high side of it on this side. So I've got the got it in here. It's all in nice and tight. And then we go over to the port side. And on the port side, it's the same thing. Of course, the clamp is the opposite. It's on the low side. But it's pulling the bottom in is the way the twist is. And I got my spacer in there. And so everything is good. The beam is centered. So, yeah, I'm just going to make sure it's square now, and then uh, start working on the, uh, the one at the, uh, the back one here.
So here's the aft beam. Here's the forward beam. So it's all fitting in nice. This one didn't have any twist. I don't even have it clamped. And it's uh, perfectly straight. So it's just that front one had a weird little twist in it. So hopefully uh, once I get the interconnecting pieces in it'll just hold in place. It's also going to have plywood on it too. That'll help hold it in place as well. So here we have it. Well, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and you come back for the next one. So until then, have a good one and we'll see you real soon right here on Renovation Sports.